Welcome to Pardon My French, the podcast that teaches you French in a fun and casual way. My name is Tom. And my name is James. Enjoy the show. When you said you had an idea to open the show, <laughs> I thought it might be good, but you know, I guess that's that's all right. It's original. Not at all. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. It's copyright. <laughs> Shut yeah, up. It's, uh, it's your own rendition. So, well. guys, welcome to uh, today's episode. Episode six is about movies and film. Uh, we're doing half of the media section. Possibly not half. Possibly less than half. Less than half, but more than a third, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. I'd yeah. say the amount of space in media that films occupy in the world, in the Western world particularly, is significante. Oh, that's not French. That's just that's, that's just me being being silly. Yeah, that's quite misleading on yeah. a podcast that supposedly teaches people French. <laughs> We've had many complaints on this podcast that this podcast does not have enough French in it. It's been called semi-educational. Yeah, we've actually had some good comments about it being educational for some people. So yeah, we're hoping it is educational for everyone who's listening. <laughs> so for those of you out there who don't know uh, me and Tom personally. Uh, we are big uh, film fanatics. Yeah. Have you watched any films recently? Well, we watched a film recently. Oh, yeah, we did. We went to the cinema to see uh, Django Unchained. Django Unchained. You know, from Quentin Tarantino. So that's, that was, that's the new film he's released, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that was widely anticipated by the whole of the world, and it did not... Um, Disappoint. That's the word I was looking yeah. for. Just to let everyone know, we're recording this quite late in the day, and... Uh, we, suffering from fatigue. We've got our inside voices on tonight. We're trying. Uh, instead of the usual glass of wine, we have a nice cup of tea. Mm, I take mine without milk. I take mine con leche. I mean, avec le. <laughs> Why are we doing <laughs> I don't know. What's so, without milk? Uh, son le. Son le. Or just, uh, you would normally in French, you would just say thé noir. Oh, black tea. Yeah, black tea. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, back to movies. So, yeah, so Django Unchained. Let's say, oh, yeah. Um, we won't give the story away too much, but uh, it basically kind of follows uh, one man on his quest. Well, two men. Two men, yeah, on, the, on their quest to kind of hunt down a, a lost love. I think that's a fair... Yeah, a stolen love, maybe. A stolen love, yeah. Yeah. So and Let's not go into it too much. Just, just say that it's... <laughs> yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's really good. So, okay, so maybe to start with, we could think of uh, <clears throat> different ways we can say if something is good in French. Um, so the obvious one is... Uh, bon. Bon, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you say it twice, then it means sweets in French. Just, yeah, uh, bonbon. Bonbon, yeah. We so ha- I mean, we have them in, good. Yeah, we have them in English, don't we? Yeah, you normally get them like... The lemon bonbons. Yeah, but they're normally from like Tesco or Asda or Sainsbury's and yeah, they're like own, own brand. Packet own brand fairly. bonbons. Yeah, and they kind of leave a layer of grease on your upper mouth. Or like burn a hole into your tongue or something awful. Yeah, I don't really like that. No. But so that, so that word that we have in the English comes from the French. It just means kind of sweets, kind of candy, what you might call. So that's bonbon. Mm. Yeah, okay. So another way of saying uh, if you saw a, a film and you sort of thought it was great... You could say something is génial. Génial? Génial. Génial. Yeah. Um, and that just that just means great, you know, really, really good, really nice. Yeah. Which Django and Chamber was. Yeah, it really, yeah, it was really good. Uh, another one that we, we have in English, you could say incroyable. Incroyable? Incroyable, yeah. Which, um, which kind of literally translates to unbelievable. Okay. You know? It sounds like incredible. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It but sounds like incredible, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the word incredible and incroyable are very uh, closely yeah. uh, closely knit. Mm. You can hear the, the similarities. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so there's some ways of describing it, and I would certainly say all three of them apply for Django Unchained, yeah. which was a, a tour de force. Ooh. We should probably just rename this the Django Unchained podcast. Yeah, probably, yeah. Pardon, That's pardon my Django. Pardon my Django. Part of my jangling of my chains. Oh, the dear silent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's try and move away from Django Unchained. Okay. Just see it if you haven't yet. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, go and spend your money on the cinema industry and, you know, oh. support your, you know, filmmakers of the world. Yeah. Not that they need that much support sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't some think Tarantino needs much. Some of them are quite rich. What do you think about the um, the recent purchase of the Star Wars saga by um, uh, by Mickey Mouse and his cronies? Uh, it's good. I think I think there's probably a lot of people out there who are quite probably angry hate by it because yeah. well, they don't want Star Wars to be ruined. But well, if you're gonna, well, Disney's gonna obviously make some new movies. I think they've said they're gonna make a new uh, trilogy. Yeah, which it, which I am. Eagerly anticipating. I'm anticipating too as well. I just don't quite understand where they're going to slot that in. You know. What do you mean? Is it going to be? Is it going to be kind of a, a reconciled Va- Vader and? Doesn't matter. Vader They've got all and, the rights you know, that they could do Scarlet, whatever they yeah. liked. That's true. But they I could mean, kill off every character and yeah. rewrite new ones, and it'd still be Star Wars, and it'd still be. They could call it Star Wars Four or whatever. They Star Wars four. Eight. That was the first one. What Star Wars Nine? No, it would be Star Wars Seven. Star Wars Seven. Or Star call- Wars negative one. Shut up. <laughs> okay, they could call it that, and then they could just make another Toy Story. It could just be Pixar, you know. <laughs> but they could just call it to Star Wars. But they have it all as like, like animated uh, character, like toys. It, it could be the life of Buzz Lightyear before he uh, crash landed on Earth, which was part of Star. They were blatantly get a little yeah, Buzz Lightyear his quest reference against in there. Emperor Zorg. But it's, is, is, is Toy Story Disney? I thought it was just Pixar. No, it's Disney Pixar. Sure? I'm pretty sure, yeah. All right. I was in, um, I was in Disneyland Paris <laughs> a couple of years ago with my, uh, with my older brother. Uh, we, we were there, you know, we, we were, Being when cool. we were there, we were both kind of, yeah, we were both in our 20s and <laughs> we were just like running past kids to get on the rides because <laughs> we, we were just so excited to see like Mr. Woody well, he's just Woody, isn't he? He's not Mr. Woody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's not so bad. Sound like a foreign exchange student getting yeah, someone's Mr. name Woody. wrong. <laughs> Mr. James. Yeah, and so we were just so excited to be there. And, you know, yeah. I'm sorry. And if anyone disagrees with me, then then please email in and we'll swiftly delete the email. But, um, <laughs> but I think once Disney is embedded in your brain mm. as a child, it never will leave you. Yeah, well, I've never been to Disney, but I would love to. The, the closest I've got is a Disney store in New York. Oh, yeah. Which, compared yeah, to yeah. Disney stores in England, is like being in what I imagine a Disneyland or Disney World to be like. Yeah. Oh, God. It's, I, I used to love Disney stores, yeah. just. I bought a collar for my dog. <laughs> it's about the only good thing I bought. Though. Did it say Pluto on it? It was red and black. It had uh, little Mickey Mouse logos on it. Oh, nice. Oh, that she, sounds... she still wears it. Sounds pretty cute, yeah. Mm, it's nice. Yeah. So um okay so so Toy Story let's think. So um so let's break down those words. So uh story in French. I think we've already done it in one of the podcasts is uh, the word is histoire. Histoire. Yeah. Like the history. So like the history of something, yeah. And to- a toy is just a uh, jouet. Like a play thing. Yeah, it's kind of like that, yeah, and it's uh spelled J O U E T. Okay. So uh that's another film, E T. Oh. Uh, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, maybe. Fun harm. <laughs> What's that you want from Yorkshire? <laughs> Fun harm, lad. I would for a moment, but I've run out of credit. On me, on me mobile. My too big to dial. <laughs> I need some kind of dialing wand. <laughs> some kind of stylus. <laughs> Why did I buy this Blackberry on me, on me home planet? It's rubbish. I can't get <laughs> signal here. Signal here back on Earth. Can I borrow your phone? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, <not> <laughs> jokes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, what about the Lion King? You know that in, Fre- in French? Um, no, not at all. So the Lion King in French is uh, le le roi de lion. So that's the king of. Oh, the it's just le roi lion. Le roi. Le roi with an R. Roi. roi lion. lion. And okay. roi means king, yeah. of course. And that's where we get the word royal. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's like oh. roi. And then royal. So ah, okay, yeah, royal yeah. is something to do with the king. Yeah, obviously. Uh, yeah, and, but of course that now yeah. means king and queen. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting. You never call the, the, a lion the queen of the jungle, though. That mm. has different implications. No, yeah, yeah, it would sound a bit... <laughs> <laughs> Always the queen of the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of wham-esque. Yeah. Yeah, but well, no, the, 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 the word for queen... Yeah. Um, 
in French is la reine. La reine? La reine, yeah. Like to reign? Yeah, like like the reign of someone on yeah. the throne. Yeah, and throne in French is trône. Trône. So, okay, so a lot of these words that um, to do with the monarchy, yeah. which is uh, monarchie. <laughs> yeah? They're all the same. They're all, they're all very similar, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which probably is, uh, is an indication as to how a lot of the, these words came into our our language through invasion mm. and through um, the overtaking of certain sections of our language by different cultures. Kind of interesting, huh? It is. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so let's just tick off a few like, basics. So, if you want to say film, film in French, it's just film. Just film. Yeah. With that accent as well. It's just, I mean, I think, I think the way America and England and, yeah, kind of English-speaking countries have overtaken the film industry... Uh, they've um, they've kind of left the world just anglicising a lot of words to do mm. with film industry. Uh, blockbuster, for example, is just the same. Just just blockbuster. blockbuster, yeah. And if you go to the cinema in um, in French, you you'd buy popcorn. Popcorn. Yeah, it's, it's it's like it's like they couldn't think of any snacks. I mean, you don't go to the French cinema and you know get a crepe. Oh, you might be, do. Might maybe. That what is it? It's not you don't want something that messy in a cinema though. No, yeah. Do you know what I saw once? I was at the cinema. What did you see? I, I can't remember what film it was, but the thing that I took away from this experience was I sat <laughs> next to a girl. Obviously a bad film. Probably. Speed two? No. Um, <laughs> and um Sandra Bullock's <laughs> Let me go on the story. Oh, sorry, on the story. Sorry. She was we were halfway through the movie and she was rustling around in a bag which got my attention, so I was looking over. She whipped out a mango and a knife. And started like carving up this mango. Okay. Like that's the worst, the worst cinema food I could think of. You weren't watching like Tom Hanks's uh, Castaway, were you? Or no. Something, or, or Leonardo DiCaprio's. It was probably something like. Um, you it know. Was probably something with Mark Planet Wahlberg. In. Oh. But it wasn't. If if I was going to see Mark Wahlberg, I'd probably take Walnuts. Mm, that's a when, bad, yeah, whenever bad, I go to see a film, I take. Bad. I take food that sounds like the main, the main actors. What do you go when you see Brad Pitt? Just uh, take pitted it. dates. Yeah, pitted dates. Yeah, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio. Take some capers. I thought we could take a Capri Sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but uh, what, what's your uh, favorite kit? Your favorite film from your your youth, from your youth. From my youth. Uh, from my jeunesse. Your jeunesse? My jeunesse, my youth. Oh. Uh, one of my favourite films from my youth, uh, I've got to be honest, is a, a Disney film, but a, a kind of an slightly unknown Disney film. I think a lot of people probably haven't even heard of it. It's called Basil the Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> it is an absolutely fantastic film. It's C'est Génial. Oh, wow. It's Formidable. That's another one. That's another yeah, one. Very Formidable. Similar. Yeah. You know? It's one I've also seen, but I uh, probably only saw it once or twice. So I haven't got this like love affair that you have. With oh my god! It's Basil. It's absolutely incredible. For listeners out there, if if you want a kind of a, a, a film education, effectively, then you have to see this film because it's <laughs> if oh, you see one film, it's breathtaking in your lifetime. This see is the one Basil, just... the great mouse detective. <laughs> is that what it's called? Yeah, effectively, it's uh, it's. Don't it's, give away the plot. Okay, fine. It's Disney's take on Sherlock Holmes, and uh, <laughs> and so it's basically a small mouse wearing like a Sherlock Holmesy esque hat, what is and that with a little a deer stalker. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, and a little kind of chubby mouse counterpart, and yeah, they get get into some capers again. Not not the fish. Um, mm, nice. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's really, really good. Is a caper uh, a fish? I think so, yeah. I thought it was like a little ball. I think they're little fish that you have on... I thought that's an anchovy. Pizzas. I uh, thought a caper was like a salty ball. <laughs> I don't know what it is. A salty ball. We'll find that one out. <clears throat> yeah. Bum can come back to. If you know that, guys, <laughs> then uh, please email in to uh, my French podcast at gmail dot, dot com. com. Okay. Yeah. And um, sorry for James reading the email out wrong last week when he said, pardon my French, dot, podcast, dot... Full co- stop, yeah. minus, plus... It wasn't even a joke. He genuinely had forgotten how um, email addresses work. Sometimes I forget how to use words properly. <laughs> yeah. It's true. 
Yeah, it's very true, very true. So, um, okay, so we've got um, a film uh, that was just un film, uh, but we have to make sure we don't confuse the word film like a movie with the word film like, say, a thin film of a thin film of oil. Okay, or, like, a, right. like a skin that you get on custard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a, a little skin or, for example, in science, sometimes you have a, a, a thin film of a certain substance, you know, to examine it, whatever. Yeah. Uh, in that case, then we would, we would call that kind of film, it's une pellicule. Une pellicule? Pellicule, yeah. Pellicule. Okay, and that basically is uh, indicating more closely a kind of, yeah, it's, it's more a reference to a thin strip of something mm-hmm. or a thin layer. Okay. In in fact, in in uh, in Spanish, you would say a pellicula mm-hmm. for for a film like a movie. Okay. So so you see how there's there's lots of overlap yeah. with this word, but um, a nice little mnemonic I thought of uh, for this word for mm-hmm. une pellicule is uh, I've even drawn a little sketch. Can you describe this this um, kind of sketch the, that I've drawn? The sketch is of what looks like a duck <laughs> <laughs> with a large beak and sunglasses but I'm assuming it's meant to be a pelican yes exactly and why is he wearing sunglasses because he's cool because he's cool as a dude <laughs> cool as duck cool as duck yeah in fact he's cool as a cucumber and cucumber in French is concombre 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 yeah exactly it's a nice word it's nice huh? Yeah. Um, so yeah so that's a little mnemonic just imagine a little Little pelican wearing some shades. Pelican. And he's he's pelly cool. You know. He's pelly cool. cool, man. He's daddy cool. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah. So, Tom, tell me more about your uh, film upbringing. When did you first get hooked on movies? The first movie I ever saw at the cinema was The Jungle Book. Ah, oh, yes. And I, was pre- um, I think my dad took me one Saturday morning or something. And um, I still remember it. And I still have, like... I don't know if this is a thing that used to happen, but like a program. You know when you, you go to the football and you get like a program yes, that now that costs the well. earth, it used to be affordable. But mm-hmm. I have like a the program from the movie. I imagine it was just something that was on the side when I went. And yeah. I still have it from wow. when I was like, I can't remember, five, six? You should, you should frame that, sell uh, it. It's in a box somewhere. I know I own it, but I won't throw it away. I haven't got a clue where it is. Either sell it for a lot of money or keep it for the emotional... Mm. value mm. but in my family my little brother and little sister we'd watch the same movie over and over again which I think was quite yeah. common yeah yeah you'd yeah, record it off television thing. or you'd rent it from Blockbuster or you'd have bought it or have it bought for you and you'd watch it over and over yeah and we'd over do the same thing and over even this Christmas I off, off my sister I got a, a DVD of uh, The Muppets Christmas Carol good movie yeah it's an absolutely incredible movie um, and uh, yeah we were just reminiscing when I was Skyping them a few weeks ago we were reminiscing the moment in which, uh, <laughs> in one of the songs, they rhyme the word cheeses with Mises. <laughs> Mises? <laughs> Instead of mice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty classic. Classic bit of a Classic moment of cinematography. Yeah. I also remember watching uh, a lot of like family movies rather than animated movies, more like yeah. Home Alone. Yes. Ghostbusters. Great. Things like Drop Dead Fred. Don't think I've seen that one. Rick Mail is like an imaginary friend. Okay, and it is amazing. Sounds a bit. Uh, if of all the of all the uh, you know Hollywood actors to have as my imaginary friend, I think I wouldn't put Rick Mail at the top. He's a complete fool. I find him a bit creepy as a. He was very as, creepy. as a kind of an imaginary ghost counterpart. It was it was quite scary at times. I think if I had a ghost counterpart or kind of imaginary celebrity friend, one. celebrity, I don't know. I'd probably go for someone like Morgan Freeman or someone someone very reassuring. Someone who could narrate your life. Yeah, be, yeah, yeah. I'd go for, I don't know, Ricky Gervais. Just pure comedy. <laughs> just He'd just be ragging your life all the time, though, wouldn't I wouldn't he? mind. It'd be all right. Yeah, all right, yeah. Like, shut up, you're not real. <laughs> so, yeah, so you were into a lot of family movies, yeah? Mm. Yeah, me too. I like, I like them as well. I like that bit in Home Alone too when um, he gets bricks thrown on his face. <laughs> which in a lot of the versions they show on TV, they cut it out. Oh, do they? Yeah, because it's, it's quite brutal. Some yeah. kid hurling bricks at people. I never understood how the villains didn't die very, very painful deaths. He didn't, like, shoot them films. or stab them. He, like, set them on fire a bit, electrocuted them. <laughs> yeah. yeah Nail through the foot. Nail through the foot. Tin can in the face, like a paint can. <laughs> yeah. 
I think at one point they receive a, a, a large blow to the head via a log swinging down from a stairwell. Yeah, that's like the t- that's in Home Alone too. Because in the first one, he just does two uh, uh, paint cans and yeah. smash them. Yeah, you're right. Then in the second one, he does it again. They're like, oh, we know what's happening. They miss it. Then he throws like a big like metal bar. Like, like a it. very heavy cast iron metal bar. Yeah. I don't know how we even put that up. And then. I'm pretty sure at the end of Home Alone 2, they actually fall from a, a burning rope or something yeah. onto kind of... Basically concrete no, no, or fall, like a metal they fall bin through or like wood that's been set up, and there's loads of paint on it as well. And they fall through the wood, then hit the concrete, <laughs> and all the paint they're looking at, and then uh, hits them again. Well, I'm not a medical profession, but I'm pretty profession. sure you're not a medical profession. I'm not a medical profession. <laughs> <old>. <laughs> See, my words fail it's me. Nobody again. business. What your job is? No, but I'm pretty sure that kind of you know infliction of pain <laughs> would definitely kill a person. Yeah. So that's my only, that's my that, only criticism that of Home Alone. That wouldn't be a child's movie. It wouldn't be a family movie well, if he killed two men. Well, I think children like realistic scenarios. So uh, <laughs> just putting that to Macaulay Culkin. And then think about in, what you've done. Then he's in like some sort and of... Please reflect on it. Delinquent unit. And that's what yeah. Home Alone is. Yeah. So he actually, you know, he sued his parents. Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Mac is his name now. Is he? Yeah. Hmm. So uh, yeah, he was, a, he was a famous child actor, wasn't he? Gone bad. Uh, gone bad, yeah. He's, yeah. got, he's got other siblings, isn't a he? A bad boy. Siblings that are good actors. But yeah, but no one cares about them. Not really, because they weren't in Home Alone. Actually, one of his siblings, you know in Home Alone 1, yeah. and maybe two, you know the one that wets the bed? No, but... He's yeah, got the big no. glasses on, I can't remember what they call him, but he's like the geek that like, drinks all the Pepsi and Coke or something. <laughs> That's actually his brother. Oh, uh, right. Little fact Sounds a bit like you. Mm, maybe. <laughs> So yeah, he's he would you could call him in French un, an acteur. An acteur. Yeah, so that's an actor. Again, we have a lot of similarities with the English version, um, but perhaps in this case um, it was the other way around. Perhaps the word acteur first appeared mm. in French. Um, now I'm saying this because, as with many uh, professions in English, uh, we have a difference between a male and female actor, don't we? Mm-hmm. So we have an actor and an actress. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we see this in a lot of French professions. Um, so in the fr- in French, you have an acteur and une actrice. Une actrice. Okay, and I don't know about you. I, th- I think actrice sounds quite a lot like actress. Yes, I would yeah, agree. Yeah. So lots of people now, though, it, like it seems they don't want to be called. They don't want to have a distinction between actor and actress in English. Yeah. They want to be. They're all actors. Yeah, I personally think it's easier. And sometimes, sometimes it's good to um, differentiate between the, the, the roles. Sometimes the, mm. the gender is important for some professions, but yeah, I think most of the time, if you have one word for it, then it, yeah. it kind of almost creates an equality, doesn't it? It would. It, some sentences would sound weird, like you know the actor that plays the Bond girl. Yeah. That would sound a bit weird. Yeah, I think I agree with that. You there, but unless yeah, they just had a lot of makeup. Yeah, it hasn't uh, become commonplace yet. <laughs> no, not really, no. <laughs> no. So, um, so yeah, so when you go to the cinema, you could say, je vais au cinéma. Je vais au cinéma. Yeah, je vais is I go. I go. Or I'm going. And au cinéma. So, so yeah, so we've seen, we've seen the au before. That's mm. the masculine version of a. Mm. So, je vais au cinéma. So, that's quite simple. Mm. And um, and we would normally say to to watch a film is regarder, regarder, regarder un film, un film. Okay. However, there's another word, uh, the, another verb that relates to the eyeballs. Mm-hmm. Um, can you think what it could be? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's um, it sounds a bit like an ocean. Uh, sea. Correct. That's what we use. That's the word I was looking for. Well done, Thomas. And uh, yeah, and the word, the verb C in French is uh, voir. I like voyeuristic. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in fact, yeah, the the word voyeur. Yeah, uh, comes voyeurism. From, comes yeah. from French, yeah, voyeurism. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, a, there's an interesting little bit here because uh, from, if you conjugate the verb voir, mm. you know what conjugate is? I couldn't explain it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll try to. It's um, it's th- the word voir is the infinitive verb. Mm-hmm. It's what you'd find in the dictionary, and then when you want to apply that to um, 
to a particular person, so I, you, we, then you have to conjugate it. You have to change yeah. the form of it slightly. Okay? And um, in the in the you, singular and kind of... Um, Plural? No, informal. Yeah. Informal way. For voir, you would say tu vois. Tu vois. Okay? Which means you see. You see. Yeah. Okay? Um, and this, this expression is used very very frequently i mean if you went if you went to um if you went to a, a party in france or if you well if you just live there mm. you're going to notice that uh, especially young people when they speak use tu vois very very frequently in conversation it's in some ways it's a bit like how we how we might say uh like, like as a filler word like or it's it's a bit like how we might say um you know what i mean <laughs> or you see what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You get me? Like, yeah. you see? You yeah, see what I'm saying? basically, you see. And so, yeah, so basically, you'll, you'll hear people saying something in French and they'll go, uh, tu vois? Da -da 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 -da, tu vois? Okay. Like that. Okay, so it's a very, very common uh, expression that you'll hear. And, uh, and that's to do with vision. So last time, uh, we were talking about how Amelie... Um, the film Amélie Poulain mm -hmm. uh, had an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. You know, do you agree with that? Yep. Jan yeah. Jan Tiersen. Is yeah, it? Jan Tiersen, yeah. Absolutely mind-blowingly good uh, music. And um, so, yeah, I wanted to talk about music in films. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about that as well. I'll talk about that with let's you. Come, let's come back. Let's come I'll, I'll let you have that one. So, um, a soundtrack in French uh, is une bande originale. Le bande is just referring to, yeah, kind of I guess a kind of a track yeah like it and uh, original I guess is just the like you might say an original motion picture yeah so it's just the original music for the film yeah and this can actually be abbreviated to a B.O. or B.O. yeah and that uh, yeah that that relates to um, the soundtrack well like to, going back I said I wouldn't but Django Unchained and all Quentin Tarantino movies are as known for their cinematography as they are for their music most of the time yeah i think uh his yeah the films are so so good yeah like you say for both things but the music is always flawless isn't it yeah i mean i, I often find that yeah some of my favorite fit well almost all of my favorite films have really really powerful uh soundtracks mm. and sometimes it's a shoddy film you listen to the soundtrack afterwards and you're like that is crap <laughs> that is really it is useless. Yeah, it can really let a film down, though, can't it? If you have the wrong music or no music, or yeah, definitely. Yeah, one of my favorite um, film score writers is James Horner. Yeah, you ever heard of him? No. Well, you, th this is the thing. He's, he's probably one of the, heard he's his one, music. He's one of the unsung heroes um, of Hollywood. Mm. He did music for yeah, Braveheart. Yeah, Titanic. Apollo 13 mm. and, and Avatar more recently yeah yeah and yeah he's one of my heroes yeah he's an absolute genius the only one I know is Danny is it da Danny Elfman Danny Elfman yeah Danny Elfman's like on every movie what does he do The Simpsons I don't know it seems like he did like every movie I'm sure it was him Under the Sun yeah definitely mm. huh. that's interesting well, so well speaking of all all movies Under the Sun Under the <laughs> French Sun um yeah, I've got a little list here of uh, of French movies. If you're if you're listening to this podcast and you're interested in um, checking out a few kind of good films that are mm -hmm. French speaking and maybe uh, that hold some kind of place in French culture, then uh, yeah, I've got a little list of them here. So, okay, you know, look at this, Tom. Okay. So, what's the first one there? I can't read that. Okay. <laughs> so the first one I wrote down was uh, Les Choristes. Um, which is a which is a really uh, really nice story about a kind of a little choir yeah. that forms and it's 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 kind of set in in wartime France yeah and it's yeah it's very very moving and everything like that it's, it's a very very well known and very good film to watch so it's just tips for people to like get a, watch a good French movie put some yeah. English subtitles on yeah and try yeah, and yeah. soak in the language <laughs> yeah for me personally yeah when I was learning French I would every couple of couple of weeks every 15 jours i would try and rent out a a um a film from a local language center and watch it either with english or french subtitles yeah yeah because watching in french is useful too yeah 
so another one I wrote down here is la la n la n yeah which is actually it's la and then it's h a i n e so it's hen but it's a silent h so yeah. la n and uh, that just that actually means the hatred oh yeah and uh, it's got it's, it stars uh, Vince Vincent Cassel a very famous uh, French actor rings a bell um yeah it should do you you'd recognize his face yeah and that's basically set in the in this like the French suburbs like uh, you know really um very very urban um urban representation of yeah. of the kind of gangster lifestyle you know um got a few others uh one of my favorite f- films that I saw uh, is by a guy called Luc Besson mm-hmm. and he and he's made films like uh, the Fifth Element. Yeah. Uh, Leon. Great film. Yeah, about the... Uh, the Hitman. About the Hitman. Who Pretty good. befriends a young child after her parents are murdered. Yeah, a bit weird. Not really. Well, it's Natalie Portman, isn't it? So... <laughs> She's still a child. He knew where she was going then. <laughs> uh, and uh, and Taken as well, he also did. Um, and Taken too. He did do Taken too, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. I haven't heard good things. Ooh, no, actually... I was just having a conversation about that, and uh, apparently it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Pretty yeah. So, um, so yeah. And, and the final one on my list is uh, is a film called La Mom. La Mom. Okay. Momme. So you probably wouldn't recognise that if you heard that in French. No. Sorry, in English. Um, and but the actual the the English version of this film was called La Vie en Rose. So okay. does that give you a clue? Say again. La Vie en Rose. Something about. Uh, Pink or well, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you're kind of on the right lines. Life, I don't know. Well, I've got no idea. Uh, the literal translation of la vie en rose means the life in pink. The life in pink. But, close. What, it, but what it means figuratively is like a you know rose, like seeing things through rose tinted glasses. glasses. So okay, yeah. the good life kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, and this this film is actually uh, the film about the the life of Edith Piaf. Mm-hmm. You know the uh, the singer, and uh, and yeah, and so the French version of this film is La Mum, which was actually her nickname, her French nickname okay. uh, back in the day when she was, you know, big, not not fat, but you know, just big you know, in the game. Yeah, famous, famous. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and and La Mum in French means sparrow, or in in, in her sense is like a little sparrow. Mm-hmm. It's a very endearing uh, word, very mm-hmm. name for her nickname. Um, interestingly, actually, the word nickname mm. in French is uh, surnom. Surnom? Yeah, which sounds a bit like, like surname, surname, doesn't yeah. it? But uh, I don't know if you've ever found this confusing, if you've ever been filling out a form or something in a French-speaking country, yeah. and you see the word nom, and, that means and you write down your, your full name, yeah. or at least your first name, and then you see, then you see prénom. prénom. Yeah. Okay, yep. so it's, there's, there's a little bit of confusion there. That's uh, what you might call a, a faux ami. Which I is, remember one of them. You know what it is? No, because it was that the first episode. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, a fake mean, friend. A false friend, yeah. yeah, false yeah. Friend. So you've got nom is your surname. Yeah. Prénom is your first name. Yeah. And surnom is your nickname. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a nickname? Mm, not one that I'd like to call myself. I might have one that people I have a few for you. I haven't actually told you them. Go on. Things like, I don't know, chubby cheeks. Well. Big nose. Just to let everyone know, a little update. I'm a little slimmer. I know it's only been a week, but I'm a little slimmer. I'm not going to lie. I probably wasn't going to bring those nicknames up because I did actually notice that. Thanks so much. Hit yeah. the gym, guys. So. I heard you in the gym the other day. Yeah. Grunting. Yeah, grunting, snorting. Ugh. I think at that, that point you were actually taking a break and you were just ha- like noshing down on a packet of... Uh, Butter <laughs> a bit of popcorn. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Hobnobs, what are they? <laughs> Chocolate coated. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got some other films, by the way. Oh, yeah? Great French film, Ratatouille. Of so, course, yeah. Um, watch that one. That's a good one. What, with little Remy? Yeah, another one that I quite liked. I think it's French, obviously. Uh, Belle du Rendezvous, the one about the cycling. Ah, I don't that, think I've seen that one. Really good. Yeah? And another one. District 13. Okay. Or I think it's called Banyel. Banyel. In what, in the French version? Yeah. 
Yeah, you might be right. I uh, I'm know. not sure because I only have seen the English version, but I think I've seen it advertised as Banyul or something. Mm-hmm. It means like area or dis or I think like district. It was when it's about a city. Oh, in the okay. future, Paris is like divided into bits, and they want to destroy a bit. Oh, really? But yeah, yeah. It's a good film. It's all about parkour, really. Yeah, that sounds pretty it's, cool. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, you know, park- it's not cultural like yours. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. No, but I mean, all these these modern films that uh, are coming out now that they they have their place in in modern culture. You know, mm. one day they will be the the past. Very deep, that isn't it? Mm. Look hey? at that. Hey, it'll just be history. Check that out. It'll just be check a- me out with my philosophy. Not really. No. Carry but, on. Well, the word parkour, which you brought up before, is yeah. kind of it's kind of like free running, isn't it? It's a li- we could get into this and I would debate it for a while. Okay, but. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's kind of like running about cities, like jumping on stuff, well, more or less. It's more it's more about from getting from one place A to place B okay. in the quickest way possible. So it's kind of like finding a route. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Well, it's interesting that because in French, the word for a route is a parcours. A route in what sense? As in a route from A to B. So your route from your house to work would be... Yeah, the, it'd be called um, parcours. Okay. Yeah, for example, when I ran the Paris Marathon a couple of years ago. Um, oh, no need for that. Okay, you can do a bit more, actually. Okay, no need for that. Um, well, yeah, I, I would look online, and I was looking for the uh, the parcours mm-hmm. du marathon. Okay. Okay, and that was the route of the marathon. So yeah. so the word parcours, which we now spell with a K, am I right? Well, uh, P-A- it's like P-A-R-K. Hour, isn't it? Yeah, something like parcours. that, yeah. Um, actually, yeah, it comes from the French word meaning a route. Yeah. Yeah, parcours. So it makes sense for it to be the direct place from A to B. Yeah. Which is why it's different to free running. Yeah, yeah. free running throws in backflips and stuff like that, oh, which yeah. is unnecessary if you're trying to get from yeah. A to B. Surplus energy, isn't it, really? Mm. Surplus activity. It's just showing off. Yeah. If I could do it, though, I would be doing it all the time. But it should involve a lot of running because um, the word parcours... Mm. Uh, again, is a is a conjugation of the verb parcourir, mm-hmm. uh, which which kind of means to cover ground, to travel a bit of a distance. And if you look at the word parcourir in French, if you break it kind of in half, if you cut it in half, mm-hmm. you've got the word par, which is a, kind of means by, by or over. And courir actually is the verb which means to run. Okay. Okay. And so what you what you're getting here is that the verb is kind of Okay, it's, it's kind yeah. of a construction of ov- by running over, mm-hmm. and that and that equals the verb to cover distance. Okay, yeah, yeah. So so interestingly, the the word parkour or the English parkour, mm-hmm. running around the city, um, has the word running within it. Oh, that's clever. So it's quite interesting, huh? So it makes sense. Parkour meaning makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, exactly. When you yeah. take it from the French rather than just. Yeah. Some English word that people think means backflip and off stuff. Exactly, yeah. I'd like to say that free running comes from the French, but it doesn't. They probably are the best at it. Yeah. Sebastian Foucault and David Bell and people, yeah. they're, they're the best. And there's that Spider-Man guy who climbs up buildings. He's French. Yeah, he has got like a, he has like a climbing wall in his house. Like, he like climbs over his bed. <laughs> like like an actual spider climbs yeah, over my bed when like, I'm sleeping. But he's, got, he's so strong, Do you it's think unbelievable. His wa- do you think his wife tries to bat him down with a kind of slipper? Maybe. And then and gets catch a him in a glass. cup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and a huge sheet of cardboard and slips it underneath and yeah. then tosses him out of the window. Probably not. No. Probably not. He'd climb back in anyway. Yeah. She's married to him. Yeah. Mm. Caught up in his web of yeah. lies. That's true. She'd probably sweep him away with like a, a broom or something. Yeah. You know? Like if he was talking and sweeping away though. Oh, yeah? You know I'm trying to get fitter. Uh-huh, yeah. You know. I do know that we'll very well, on this, yeah. but. We, it's was, a very touchy subject, isn't it? We were looking into it, weren't we, earlier, that we, here we could do some curling. Oh, yeah, yeah. If we've we got really, enough yeah. friends together. We've got, we've got enough we friends. We have only maybe one or two friends yeah. who would be willing to curl with us. Okay. <laughs> is, that, is that what you say? Yeah. You want to you wanna come and curl with me? Come and brush brush the mice really quickly. Brush the mice. <laughs> when you said that then, I thought, uh, in my in my brain box... I envisaged you brushing mice. Brushing with mice? With a tiny little kind of wrapped mm. comb. That is something I do, but that's completely aside from my fitness regime. Yeah, understandable, yeah. I just try and groom mice. Yeah. What you know. are they, do they pay you in cheese? I was really know you got those little blocks of gruyere. Well, where I have where like, are they coming from? Well, I have like friendly mouse traps, so I trap mice 
and then I keep them in a little box. Uh-huh. And then I'm like, do you remember of Mice and Men? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and what yeah. was his name? George or Lenny? I think it's uh, Lenny. Lenny would stroke it. John Malkovich. Uh, yeah, well, in, the book in, wasn't. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm in, only in, about books. But yeah, going, so going back to the curling, like maybe we could do it um, next week or something. Yeah, yeah we just need to get some friends. So we need to go out and find some friends. Yeah. One thing I was thinking, though, is, you know, people who do curling, mm. say an Olympic curler. Which one? Like the brusher the or curlist, the thrower? A curlstress. A, a curlatron. Curlatron, yeah. Do they, when they go home, do they keep curling? I mean... Well, are they are they stood in their kitchen just you know vigorously no, brushing you know, away? You know out. their homes are going to be the cleanest. Probably, yeah. But that it's just going to be sweeping constantly, rubbing away every little bit of dirt. Yeah, I'd almost feel that you could probably sweep so much that it'd be a hazard to walk around that yeah. house. You probably unless you're wearing in. like suction shoes. Yeah. Well, if you take like if it's a house where you have to take off your shoes and you just got your socks on and someone's scrubbing away, yeah. getting the floor super shiny. Yeah, you'll easily fall over. Yeah, God. Well, and do you imagine what it would be like in the house? Like that, you'd come in and you'd just scrub in, and then there'd be a big uh, target on the floor. Yeah, as you fall in, and you maybe they'd be sat at the dinner table, and you'd say, "Pass the salt," and they'd kind of slide it down. <laughs> then they, they, their children would be doing mini brushes so that the salt arrives at exactly the right spot. If that that would be impressive. Okay, if we, if we have any curlers listening, then uh, can, can you send us in your anecdotes? And please inform us of what curling's really about, because we obviously have no idea. No. But we will after a while. Yeah, and on that point, guys, as, as in the movie theatre, we're going to sweep up all the leftover popcorn and, you know, Kick out that trash. the man who's fallen asleep. Yeah, kick him out, yeah. And that has been me. Yes. Yeah, no, there's actually someone else in the room with us right now. Imagine if there was. Ooh. The Maybe. person who lives next door. What, it's Morgan Freeman, my imaginary friend? Yeah. I'll have to talk about Zara, actually. We might be keeping her awake. <laughs> as it is one o'clock in the morning now. <laughs> it's dedication, guys. <laughs> okay, so that's Bonri from uh, from Tom and I. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the this, this episode about films. And next week we'll be doing uh, something on part two of our media special. Mm. We'll be doing about music and maybe some other media... S- uh, sources might creep in there yeah hopefully so now we're on track for weekly podcasts one every week hopefully now for a couple of months um, if, so if you want to contact us or just let us know anything that you have on your brains contact us at pardon my, my french, french podcast, podcast at gmail.com gmail dot dot or get us on facebook uh, just search pardon my french and if you already have liked our page just go check it now and then because it doesn't seem to want to tell you about our new cool stuff that we're posting on it Exactly. So from Tom and I are here in Switzerland, à la prochaine.